for me, um, there was no hesitation, because uh, while music and art and museums and that, all that enrich my life, uh, books are my life. <laughs> and of course, I cannot pick one book. It, nobody can. But, but like these, these lists of picking 10 out of millions give you also the possibility to mention the ones you did not pick. That's why you do this list. And, um, because on, on, on the bottom of it, what I would like to convey to a young person is not a book, but the love of books. <laughs> but but I, I, I followed, I followed. Um, and of course, there's a question, why books? And there are many answers. One is that books are agents of empathy. So if you have wandered through the night woods with Junior Barnes, if you have suffered with Push in Sapphires, uh, with uh, Precious is her name, it's also a movie, so if you've suffered with Precious in, in Sapphires' novel Push, or you've, if you've been sad with um, Sarumi in Banana Yoshimoto's novel Amrita, which is so beautiful, it's very hard to um, be a racist afterwards, <laughs> or, or, or to be a sexist. So, it's compassion, and it's understanding, and it is this feeling of unity and difference, of uh, morals and mischief, and of triumph and trauma. Books are witnesses and agents of... Uh, witnesses and perpetuators, perpetuators they are, of, of what we call the human nature, uh, which is of a paradox kind and, and problematic and at the same time astonishingly beautiful. But, but at the bottom of it, there's only one life. There's only one's life. There's only everybody's one life. And this is why I would choose a philosophical book. <laughs> I will not talk about the books I did not mention. I, I get it out right away. I choose Seneca's Life is Short. Life is Short is a letter Seneca, like about 2,000 years ago, has written to his friend Paulinus about the importance of taking care of one's own soul and the importance of, of living one's own life. It's very beautiful, very simple and very deep, and it reminds us what it means to be human, that is, to be alive and responsible, what it means to respond to that aliveness. And, so Seneca's book challenges us over the abyss of time to answer with our own life. So then I got the second question. So what would you, you know, teach to teach the younglings? Yeah? And of course I forgot the most important thing in my essay. Um, because I think reflection and correction often go hand in hand. And I forgot to tell what I, the first thing I would say to a young person would be, I would encourage him or her. Encouragement. I would tell my students that every one of them has everything they need to make their own life, and that they are smart, and that they really would like to hear their thoughts. And you know what? I really do this. I, I do this with my students. And it really works. And they think for themselves, and sometimes they even object to me. That's what you get then. Yeah? So, well, but, but seriously, what I would teach them first would be the paradox nature of the human animal. Like this um, strange coexistence of freedom and dependence, of good and evil, of, of um, greatness and stupidity or uselessness, you know? It's not the same, but... Um, and in, in one, oneself, <laughs> and in... in, in all ourselves and in the society and in our species. And so, so to understand that we're not torn by this Aristotelian-based logic of either or, but we are crea creatures of as well as, as in beauty as well as suffering. And hereby, we totally avoid any form of dogmatism. Like Adorno said, the whole is the untrue. And by that, you always have a little room for descent. So, I would not encourage them to be themselves. I would encourage them to be their many selves. And then, 
I would tell them that all good things take time. And that you, if you want to really be good at something, have to strive and to struggle so hard your fucking bones bleed. And then I would tell them they would fail and then get up again and then fail again and then get up again and like, you know the story. Perseverance, perseverance, perseverance and a sense of humor. Because humor is the ability to take everything very serious and everything very not serious at the same time. And boy, you really have to know yourself to laugh at yourself. And so I think this uh, kind of paradox strategy is the best answer to this wicked wonder we call life. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Um.